Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Just Open It, the YouTube series in which I open action figures and toys. My name is Russ, thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. You know, if you're a fellow action figure collector, or if you're a fan of toys and pop culture in general, please consider subscribing to my channel, Karaoke Fanboy TV. As you can see, I buy a lot of toys, and I like to open them and display them, and I thought it'd be fun to share that process with you here on YouTube. So, this is another Just Open It first, folks, as I delve into this Star Trek three pack of action figures. I'm very excited about this. I acquired this at auction, believe it or not. I went to an estate sale. Well, that's what I thought it was going to be, an estate sale. It turned out to be one of those auctions where they were clearing out, I don't know if it was old inventory or somebody's storage locker, like in Storage Wars, but they had tons of toys and they were sectioning off these lots on tables. And there were a lot of Star Trek action figures from Playmates in the 90s. So I believe um, I acquired this set for $5. And you can tell from the original KB price tag, at one point it was $34.99 at KB Toys. So <laughs> I'm excited to have it as a, a part of my collection, specific, specifically because I have primarily the first wave of Star Trek The Next Generation Playmates action figures. Essentially the bridge crew, the core characters, um, and that's all I'm really interested in. But as these become more available on the collector's market, and as, frankly, they're so cheap, I figured why not get just some of the secondary characters that I, that I remember and love, too, like Lieutenant Barkley. Um, and, of course, the uh, departed Tasha Yar. So these were the two figures I was most excited about. And then this uh, Captain Picard in alternate uniform from the episode Tapestry is just kind of a bonus. And really the reason I'm opening this in the context of, of today, we're in the middle of a Star Trek renaissance, obviously. There are all sorts of new shows on Paramount Plus, most of, most of which admittedly I have not watched, including uh, Picard season two. I have not uh, watched any episode as of this recording of Picard season two yet. So please, no spoilers in the comments. But since that is uh, out now, I thought this would be a cool three-pack to open because it so primarily features Picard. But I'm in it for Barkley and Yar right here. So let's dive in and see what they're like. These sculpts were pretty um, straightforward. And in fact, there is... Um, on, on Instagram, I believe it's Varner Studios. I'll put the, the link in my description of the video. But the company that was responsible for sculpting these toys, it has been revealing some of their old designs and blueprints or whatever you'd call them. Um, some of the prototype sculpts uh, on their Instagram. And I've begun following it. And it, it's pretty cool. It's kind of a blast from the past. And they had a hand in everything I loved from Ninja Turtles to Star Trek to Toxic Crusaders to all sorts of action figure lines from this kind of beloved nostalgic era and uh, I'll tell you what this tape might be 20 years old but I'd invest in that company to this day because that adhesive is strong all right we're in Let's see how easy this is boom so long box although I will say some fun descriptions of each character here. I, I won't read them since we're reviewing three toys today. But, um, at a quick glance, it looks like just some fun synopses of not just these characters, but the uh, episodes of this series um, that they were prominently featured in. So there's a little something here. Uh, Strike Force Vehicle Collection from... Uh, <laughs> From Star Trek here, some some mid uh, mid nineties goodness from Playmates and Paramount Toys. Now I wonder if Paramount Toys released anything else other than Star Trek stuff. I'll have to dig into that. But um, okay, so there is a lid on this. Sorry for the, uh, the white noise there, but I had to pop that bad boy off. And again, this came out, uh, this came out what year exactly? Um, 1998 this came out. So we're looking at, uh, <laughs> we're looking at uh, air that was, that was encased 
when um, like Clinton was still in office, right? Something like that. So pretty cool. And I'm going to start with uh, Barclay here. Oh, okay. Nowadays, action figures have a clear rubber band that holds them to the plastic. But there was a time, kids, and I'm just going to have to do this unceremoniously with these weapons. But ah, There was a time, kids, when twist ties were used <laughs> to hold the figures in. Yes, the very same technology that you would use to close and secure a garbage bag. <laughs> That's what companies used to keep action figures secure in the package. And so now I am opening these figures. <laughs> like unbraiding them from the plastic here. All right, let's see, does it just all come out at this point? So the accessories just came out, and that's a, a bit of a bummer to, to see them come out kind of sloppy like that. But, um, And I don't know what everything is yet. But fortunately, Playmates did this thing with these Star Trek figures where the accessories were monochromatic, um, especially toward the end here in the late 90s. So um, I could tell whose is whose pretty easily. Blue is Picard. I think um, these green accessories are Barclays and purple for Yar. Um, a little sexist, but so be it. So here we go with Barclay first. And there was a time, too, when these figures came with stands. And, uh, and those stands had the characters' names on them. These do not. So at some point, Playmates gave up on that personalization. Um, which to me is just fine because those stickers would often end up coming off the stands anyway. And what's cool here is that you get not just the classic insignia, but kind of the updated insignia that started with either Star Trek Generations or First Contact, I believe, if not even earlier, Deep Space Nine. But I'm not going to pretend to be a Star Trek expert in this video. I am definitely just a fan that watched all of The Next Generation multiple times, especially now on streaming, but I do not have, like some Trekkers or Trekkies do, an encyclopedic knowledge of these characters. I'm just a, a fan and excited to add these guys especially to my shelf. Um, so here we go with Lieutenant Barkley, and the likeness isn't bad. Of course, he was played by uh, Dirk Benedict, right? Um, well known as well as Howling Mad Murdoch from the A-Team. So this is like <laughs> the third or fourth uh, Dirk Benedict action figure I have. Gosh, I hope I'm getting his name right. If not, I, I apologize. In fact, um, is Dirk the other guy? Uh, so this is, it could be embarrassing. Dirk might be a uh, face man. So boy, uh, I'll correct myself in the, in the description if I'm wrong, because I think now I, I am, and I'm just drawing a blank on, on this actor's name. Excellent actor. So fun to see him on screen in Star Trek, as well as in the A-Team. But his joints are um, really, really stiff. And I could tell that the paint application is heavy on this guy. Just look at his, look at his hair there. Um, it's a little darker than I remember his, his hair being. Um, but uh, all in all, still pretty cool. Yeah, the joints are just tough. But... Um, these figures came with stands, and they really didn't even need them um, because they stood pretty well on their own. And what's interesting here is that he comes with a phaser, and yet the beam coming out of the phaser is the same plastic as the phaser itself. No paint application to distinguish. And I remember as a kid, I actually took a scissors, and I, and I cut the beam off. So I have uh, some phasers that are not mid-fire um, because I felt like that was a little more accurate, at, at least for play. Um, this looks like a uh, classic phaser as well. So I'm now wondering if these are Picard's accessories. In fact, can I tell from the, from the packaging? Yes, indeed. Um, the green is Tasha's, 
the purple is Barkley, and um, the cards is blue. So I take back my comment about the sexist uh, purple um, <laughs> accessories from earlier here. But uh, yeah, so this is Barkley stuff, and he comes with like 24th century equivalent of a laptop, tricorder, um, everything's identified here. What's the other thing? Personal access display device or a pad, uh, an iPad, <laughs> essentially. So purple here is Barkley, okay. Tasha, who met an untimely fate at the end of season one. Um, as a kid, I remember I jumped into Star Trek The Next Generation around season four. And so Tasha was kind of just a story that was being told at the time. When I caught her death in reruns, it was still pretty jarring to see um, that it was kind of hasty and brutal. Uh, and it's surprising that they would kill a, a major character at the time in that way. But I guess they needed to prove that their adventures had stakes. Even now, as I just see previews and stuff for Star Trek, I, I think, you know, these characters are meant to be explorers. And you're really emphasizing, like, battle scenes. Um, especially, like, there's an interactive video game out that has a cool uh, promo spot with uh, Brent Spiner and William Frakes and... and uh, LeVar Burton, but the emphasis is on battle. And to me, Star Trek and Gene Roddenberry's vision was all about exploration. Um, but I wonder if we have a bit of Tashiar's legacy to blame for that, as she was brutally killed by an alien on a planet. And, and, and normally they, they would try to befriend that alien with peace, but when, when it comes out swinging, what are you going to do? Anyway, <laughs> there's Tashiar looking great, and I'm excited to have her... Uh, as uh, one of my um, one of my characters. Now, I'm assuming this is actually the version from yesterday's Enterprise, and indeed she is. And I could tell that as a fan because she has a collar on her uniform, which was something they instituted after season three, I believe. Um, two pips, so still a lieutenant, but the collar really tipped it off. Like, okay, that's a more modern uniform than the season one, season two suit that she was originally in, so... I like it. I like it a lot, and I'm happy that she is now part of uh, my collection, and perhaps I'll have my data figure staring at her longingly from the other side of the shelf. And now here is Picard. His head was turned slightly, um, but Playmates kind of nailed um, a Patrick Stewart likeness fairly out of the gate. What's interesting about this character, unlike these two, these two have um, elbow joints, and they're relatively easy to pose. I see that Picard does not, which tells me this body is potentially a reuse, maybe from a Admiral Kirk uh, figure, but um, very limited points of articulation here. So I think just a five point, in fact. So um, classic in that way, but uh, still kind of cool to have a Picard in a different uniform. I don't know if this will remain in my collection I may pass him along, um, because I have a Picard that I like, but uh, still pretty cool to see uh, the different uniforms from this classic Trek era. So, um, thank you very much for watching this video. All in all, these are great, great figures, um, kind of taking for granted that I've had figures from this line in my collection for a long time open, and so I know how easily their um, accessories fit in their hands. Um, again, I want to give credit not just to Playmates, but to, I believe, I hope I'm saying this right, right Varner Studios for, um, for designing these characters in such a way that they could easily hold their accessories. And um, the accessories themselves were pretty screen accurate and generally fun um, to have as not just, again, weapons with phasers, but these like scientific tools and stuff, you know, so... There's Barkley kind of, you know, taking readings on his tricorder and, and looking at his pad. <laughs> Maybe he has some pictures of uh, Counselor Troy in there that he's swiping through and hiding before uh, Riker comes into the room or something. Um, Picard comes with this. Um, I believe this is a recreational uh, accessory here, like a game or something. I could be wrong. But I like the medical kit, too, and I'm wondering if I'm going to put that on... Um, by Dr. Crusher instead, just because it's so uh, cool to, to have. 
It's got the uh, the logo there, the Star Trek logo, if you can see that. And uh, just kind of slings over the arm. And then the, uh, the 3D, like, chess game that they always played. <laughs> so that's kind of a neat um, accessory, too. I mean, if I had, like, a 10 forward playset, this would definitely go on a table there and, and, and be in, uh, on display. But it looks like you... Oh, there it goes. I was going to say, it looks like you might have to use adhesive to get it to stand, but there it is standing on its own. And then this thing is a drinking mug. <laughs> it's literally just a peg of plastic with a hole in the middle. And I thought maybe it was a packing piece, that it wasn't an accessory at all. But it is indeed a drinking mug, so that must have some significance from this episode that uh, Picard was in. I think this was, now that I'm thinking about it, this was like a flashback episode. Um, and I think he gets into a fight in a bar or something like that. Uh, might have been a Q episode. Um, Trekkers, correct me if I'm wrong there in the comments. And then here we have Tasha. Um... And so that explains the classic phaser. This is the Yesterday's Enterprise episode, so the timeline was wonky. Okay, forgive me. Forgive me for coming into this slowly, everyone, um, and for not getting this actor's name right if I got it wrong, and I think I did. Uh, so I'm going to be really upset with myself about that. But this, these uh, just open it's are one and done, one take. Um, so there she is kind of holding that phaser, getting ready uh, for an attack. But she comes with the classic phaser, too, so... Very cool. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this uh, episode. I really appreciate it. Join me next time when I look at another uh, unopened action figure here in my living room. I pick it up and I tell myself, you know what? Just open it. <laughs> I'll catch you next time.